Namaste beautiful yogis, welcome to Ali Kama Nova Yoga, I'm Ali <laughs> and today we're doing a class called water. Water is probably the most magnificent, one of the most magnificent substances on earth. It's similar to air, both are said to carry prana and water mm, based on um, Masaru Emoto, but before him to work, is a storage of memory, memory storage uh, of everything on earth. Um, I was just recently watching some uh, a segment of a movie that was on Gaia on water, and it was showing um, a case in which um, a vial of poison in a lab was dropped, a seal, sealed vial of poison was dropped in a glass of water or in a container of water and it was sealed and a couple of days later they removed uh, the vial from the water and the water was clean because the vial was sealed and they uh, gave it to the lab rats and they all died from poisoning. So they immediately tested the water and the water was pure, uncontaminated and that's when they realized, they realized that water can take on, um, can be charged by the energy of things that it comes in contact with. So water, we're made out of water of course, our water is a memory storage, what we drink is very important when we talk about body hacking, mind hacking anything of that nature, water is essential, it's like the air we breathe, it's the essence of life. Um, the quality of our water is very important, city water according to um, Emoto, Dr. Emoto, um, I think he was a doctor, don't quote me on that. Um, according to his research, because he did endless experiments on different types of water and the water that was um, healthy water had symmetrical shapes, it would form symmetrical molecular shapes and hexagonal shapes, kind of like snowflakes, to where um, disharmonious energies would make water look pretty much not symmetrical, uh, distorted, chaotic and what you would call ugly. So um, the quality of our water is very important. I have always been what you would call <laughs> obsessed with water. I always seek for a good way of purify, purifying city water because we are all faced with that and even in my uh, unfortunately experience I realized even well water needs to be very well purified and uh, there is different ways to purify water, reverse osmosis is okay, it's good, um, gravity filters are okay but they have to be changed way more often than previously claimed and for me, I have discovered that the water that works the best is distilled. The best water if you are to really live near very good spring water, that is geyser type spring water, it, it, it comes up to the surface on its own, it's not drilled by humans, that will be your best type of water because what water does is naturally it moves in vortex type way and it purifies itself, it charges itself, it deletes the old memory uh, from itself and it also mineralizes itself through, um, through the layers of rock. Uh, so that would be the best way um, to receive water but most of us can't always get good water. Bulgaria is really fortunate in that way because there is water collection pretty much everywhere. When I go to um, there, whether I'm at the sea, in uh, Sofia, the capital, or in any mountain town, there is always a good source of very good healing water. And uh, I always go and collect water, well, like most Bulgarians. Um, here we found good water in Carlsbad, uh, California. It's, it, it comes out um, by the sea, uh, at sea level, and it's, uh, it's they call it alkaline water, it's almost 9 I think pH. Uh, as I mentioned distilled, I will actually link an article below on all of those things because this is very important, it's important to really, if we're really caring about our health, we can do so many things but if we don't pay attention to water, we're gonna cancel a lot of things. For example, city water has so much chlorine in it, it will destroy our microbiome and microbiome is everything, it's related to mental health, to uh, digestive health and from there to everything, every organ. 
uh, we don't want to disturb our microbiome and according to uh, Emoto, Emoto's research, I want to say, call him Dr. Emoto but I forget, um, the more chlorine in the water the less crystal uh, formations, crystal formations in the water and chlorine in the water creates non-harmonious, non-symmetrical formations. Um, now he worked with a lot of distilled water, he also tested a lot of spring water, natural uh, sources of water, natural water, uh, bodies of water. The polluted water was very disharmonious um, um, shapes. With distilled water you can charge it. From my personal research, I took a few years before I finally jumped in and received for my birthday after talking about it forever a distiller and I've been glued to it. I travel with it. We literally packed, when we moved from Texas to California, we packed just a few things, whatever we could fit in the car. Distiller, <laughs> the distiller came with me. Uh, the, the stuff that comes out of the water is just, it's disturbing at the bottom, on the bottom of the distiller. But distilled water is considered empty. Uh, you could call it dead, but not in a dead, because there is also dead water, according to Emoto, uh, Masaru Emoto. And that is more disharmonious water with bad charge, bad vibes, <laughs> bad mojo. Um, distilled water is empty. So it is open to be charged to receive the new incoming frequencies, the new um, photonic light, the new neutrinos coming from the central sun, since we're moving to a new part of human consciousness. Uh, so water would be a receiver, it would be able to uh, take any new consciousness or frequency coming. You can also charge it with words, with music, etc. It would take it. Take the new charge because it's empty. It's, you delete, you take the memory of water out of it. To where if you just use reverse osmosis, it, you will take, you can take it to eight parts per million. So that is pretty much you take almost everything out of the water, but, and fluoride is taken with gravity filters and with reverse osmosis is mostly taken out. But what is not taken out is the memory of water. And there is probably different things you can do. You can vortex it, you can charge it, you can put minerals in it, or um, I say uh, fulvic acid, etc. You can do those things and all of them make a difference but in my experience lately in the last two years I think I started uh, or so this tilt is absolutely magical it's a clean slate and you can you can from there anything is possible also it tends to draw out of the body the inorganic material pollution basically out of the body people think it, it deprives us of minerals but we don't really receive minerals from our water in my personal opinion this is my opinion but it's also based on a lot of reading i've done um, and it's based on my actual experience i really shifted my understanding of water when i started to um, distill my water and i use strictly distilled unless spring water and look at those two cuties, they're just, they like to sleep head to head. Um, <laughs> so um, pay attention to your water and also to um, the charge you give it, to the words you use, to the, the visions you use, because you yourself are the same water. I forgot to say that he found a lot of uh, pharmaceuticals in the city water or in water in general, in water bodies in general um, and when we filter it we do remove those particles but we don't remove the memory of it and that is the principle behind homeopathy and back flower essences and any energy medicine a lot of that medicine works on the principle of the memory of water it's absolutely powerful it's life transformative the more you, the deeper you go into this the more it reveals to you um, and That is part of the reason why I'm so, so obsessed uh, with water and I pay so much attention to it and I really try to source good water or make good water. And um, we have to really pay attention the way there is negative words, negative programs, belief systems uh, that we 
um, of our pattern beliefs, um, the same way we have positive visions and beliefs and words that we can saturate our um, our space, uh, our aura, our, our um, consciousness with. And of course that resonates with the water in our system. We, we can change on molecular level by how focused our mind is. That's why we have a class on focus and concentration. Because uh, when we have focused a strong thought that we can hold and we don't flinch, we don't go into other uh, areas, but we fully, fully uh, focus, we are able to really send direct energy and begin change on molecular level. Now, what we intake also, of course, has the potential to charge us and to, to cleanse us, to purify us. So water is very important. Drinking water, water in our body. Language is very powerful. So the way there is words that can disempower us, words that can uh, enter us into contract. The same way there is words that can elevate us. There's powerful words that are uh, that remain in our language that are reflective of a real high frequency sound. Um, and we work by resonance, we resonate with whatever we most focus on or we continuously bring to our attention. So there is so many um, things that you can pay attention to. People uh, often say things that are supposedly motivational, but oftentimes they have s kind of sticky energy. For example, never give up. It's a double ne negative, it's never, it, it holds the, the word giving up in itself. So that is not really something that will uplift you. It can, um, everything is frequency. So if you are in a frequency of shame and you say never give up, that's actually a higher frequency sentence than shame and guilt. So everything is relative, but, again, but still it's lower frequency than believing in yourself, than um, persevering, consistence, faith, love, joy, etc. So everything is relative, but at the same time, we don't want to get stuck in cycles or hook, hook on to. I may do a class if I have t classes left in dedicated to relationships and relations because the people that we allow into our, into our consciousness through media and literature and books and movies and relationships, there's a lot of people that are really panicked about everything and, and they run on um, uh, almost they're hooked onto a dying timeline where everything is desperate, the earth is dying, everything is just spinning out of control, everything is just, you know, dying off. And that is in dissonance with where consciousness is going. We're actually expanding in consciousness, the earth is expanding in consciousness, shifting. Uh, shifting um, physically a dimension, a paradigm. So things are shifting in such a way and we're going to see such advancements in everything, in healing, in medicine, in purifying the environment and all of that, that all of the worries are actually fitting into the problem. We're creating more of it by hooking onto it. So it's very important who we believe, what we believe, and so forth, where we put our faith in. Uh, oftentimes we trust people that they themselves are lost in a very, in a, in a downward spiral, right? In a consciousness that is spiraling further down into the, into the material. Uh, so I think this was a long <laughs> talk on water, but I don't know how else to say it. Water is important, take it seriously, um, don't, Think that chlorine in water is harmless just because it's always everywhere. Um, drinking chlorine, I've had these discussions with a lot of my family and people just saying just tap water is so, so amazing. Uh, but even if it comes from a good source, which some city water does come from mountain water near the city, still the addition of chlorine and the pipes, the pipes themselves create a very dissonant energy in the water because it doesn't in any way um, imitate natural flow, how water would move naturally through um, nature. So we have to be careful. Uh, I'm not always perfect. This is not an easy, uh, uh, there is no easy fix actually with water. Water is one of the things that we have to really 
figure it out in our lifestyle. That's why I'll, I'll give you an article with suggestions. It is one of those dilemmas that we all have to find a way to work, to, to find a solution that works in our life. And, um, and I do like the idea of distilled because first of all, it pulls a lot of the new chemicals that we're exposed to, to new inorganic elements that we all take in via different routes, air and food, etc., water. Uh, but also I like the fact that it's a, it's a clean slate. It doesn't have any memory in it, so we can charge it with, with the new incoming energies on Earth. Now, if it's a water bubbling from very deep and carrying also uh, minerals in it, um, that's phenomenal. I mean, there's places on Earth that the water has uh, boron in it. It's, it's very charged with um, uh, minute amounts of calcium and magnesium and all of that, and that can be very helpful when it's organic. Mm, and that is even a step up from distilled, of course. Uh, distilled is like rainwater. Uh, but not every, as I said, this is not a very practical solution for most people, so it's good to have a few things going on. We, ha we got a um, dispenser for water and we go, collect, go get water from the spring and we put the dispenser, on, uh, we put the uh, big jugs on the dispenser and that's one of our sources and then the distilled, I do it daily. And between those two, it's, it's, it's an okay working uh, mechanism. Um, and, and once you distill your own water, you see what comes out of it. So that's another thing. Once you, you are not, no more, <laughs> the, no more lying to yourself about really what is coming out. It's just, it's just rusty and firm minerals like um, brown minerals or brown stuff coming out of it that builds up on the bottom and the sides of the distiller. So all of this gets out through distillation, so it's con evaporation, condensation, distillation, and that, that gives you um, a purified water. Anyways, I think um, with the minerals, um, with the addition of minerals um, we can add to the water uh, shungite and that is just on the bottom of the water you can add shungite in your container and it goes through the shungite and shungite it's a big purifier um, carbon um, charcoal also is a purifier um, you can add uh, a little bit of uh, fovic acid to it as well that adds minerals um, there is so many solutions and um, minerals are so important, as I mentioned, iodine, boron, um, selenium, all of those, uh, those are really important. Boron is to the parathyroid as, uh, as iodine is to the thyroid. So boron plays an important role in calcium, bone formation, um, um, osteoporosis, prevention, etc. And uh, how we absorb calcium and vitamin D. And, uh, how we utilize it into the bones and so forth and into the and how uh, we take it out of the soft tissue so all of those things are very important and we either have to receive them from a nutritious diet and sometimes they are received in certain areas in the world from water and all of those things matter so that is a very in, in a way it is a spiritual subject or it is a little more um, of an idea type of subject, but at the same time, it's extremely practical. Water, practically, that we drink day to day, it has to be something that we know what we're in, taking in. Anyways, with that all being said, I'll link su my suggestions and my setups for water below in an article. And for this class, you can imagine um, either a snowflake or you can hold a beautiful thought the, the, the shape of a mountain, um, the shape of a pine tree, or a beautiful word, something that rings beauty for you, a word that you love, joy, consciousness, um, words that elevate you in general, and you can hold this through the class, in your consciousness, in your third eye, and that will charge the molecules in your own body, the water in your own body. and. Um, through the power of intention and awareness and consciousness, we can also purify the water in our body, but also intention paired with action. 
All right. Remember to flow with love, strength, and ease. Starting with circular movement. Water flows. If you think of um, surfing waves, they form that vortexing um, shape. Water moves in vortexing ways. And the class undulation that I had, it's very much about the how, how interpretation of the movement of water, that type of movement, movement inspired by water. Here we're going to open, so we're opening the chest, palms facing forward, and close. Open, lift the chin, close. Open, close, pay attention to your feet and, and pelvic floor, so you're already becoming aware of foundation up. So you're stretching the back, stretching, opening the chest, stretching the back, opening. All right, now twist. Hold, open, close, twist, twist, open. Now twist with your hips following. Twist, twist, twist from the middle, open. Initiate from the middle, not from the arms. Open, great. Shake it out. And we're going to squat, lift the heels, drop the heels, come up. Squat, push the hips back, come up. Hold your beautiful image in your space. Now, the next one, squat, lift the heels, drop the heels, kick back. Squat, lift, drop, opposite leg, kick back, booty. Great, for the next one, squat, come up and lift the left knee to the right elbow. Squat, change, pull the belly in and really focus on a good squat here. Give me your best squat so your knees are not buckling. That's the most common mistake and the other is just very forward squatting. Another possible area where you could, um, you could be caving in is core. You're just not engaging your core and you're moving through the motions without, without intention. So intention in the motions, beauty in your chest. <laughs> I could say open your chest, but just if you think about openness and integrity, that can give you a little more spark and let's go so when you squat pelvic floor has to be engaged the core is engaged and when you twist core change everything comes from awareness the knees don't buckle they can you can press out let's bring the hands behind the head Great. For the next one, we're gonna work with balancing, holding beauty in your sphere. And 
and grab your left knee, tippy toes on the right side, squat opposite. A few more. All right, last one. And now we're gonna add a twist. Squat, without the tippy toes, just grab your left knee with your right hand and look behind and change. A few more. Last one. And now we're gonna try the tippy toes. <laughs> I want you to work on balance. You can you can be near an area where you can grab onto, near a wall or in the back of a couch, etc. chair. If you don't trust your balance. Squat. And now right hand to left knee and tippy toes. Squat, opposite. Squat, opposite. Squat, opposite. Squat, opposite. How are you doing? Let me know. <laughs> I would like to hear. Great. Last one. And we're going to drop back on our heels. Tippy toes, drop. Reverberation. The beautiful image. Hold it. With every little thing you do, you, you help yourself shift your state and it is a continuous spiral. <sighs> spiral up. <sighs> All right. <sighs> Stepping at the front, shift onto your right leg. And we're going to deadlift it. So pay attention to your alignment here. I want you to hinge at the hips. Keep your standing knee slightly soft. And you're going to lower down with a straight chest and hinging. The hips are hinging and your back is straight. Your hips are square And here. you're going to draw it in so belly in this is kind of like a core move lower down three four five now one same side twist right hand to left knee look behind if you can two twist three twist four twist five twist now still on the right leg i'm getting 
giving you a bit of a, <laughs> of course, a workout. We're gonna step back in high lunge and now hinge here. You don't have to touch the floor, but you're going to reach down. It's a hinging motion, so you're really using the glutes. Your back is not caving and you're not moving from your back. You're moving from the glutes and step in at the front belly in. and again step back hinge see four five all right last last segment on the right side step your back and lift lift the toes on the right side and kick and bring it to the front step it back lift the toes or lift your heels onto the tippy toes kick step at the front step it back kick four Last one. And changing sides. That lift, hinging, straight back, soft knees. One, two, three, four. Five, those are really powerful if you focus. Five, next five. One, twist. Left hand, right knee, look behind. Move from your core, from your midsection. Two. Three. Four. Five. Next segment. Step the right foot back and lower down here, hinging. Step it in. Two. Three. Four, five. I actually have a really beautiful image in front of me of a Christmas tree with a star on top with the sparkling snowflakes. And it gives me such a buzz in my heart. <laughs> All right. You may be doing this in summer one day, <laughs> in day but that always, it's a, that's always a good feel. All right, last five, you're gonna step back lift your toes or lift your heel onto the tippy toes drop kick and reset that's three And that's five. Figure eights with the hips. Diaphragmatic breath. So you're gonna breathe into your belly. Expand. That's a very calming breath, anxiety relieving breath. Circular with the hips. Last exercise standing. 
stepping onto the right leg we're going to take the left leg behind us and across keep it in the air so you're engaging the inner thighs and come out of this with a straight back paying attention to your posture and you're going to grab your knee come onto the toes and look behind any stage of this you can modify you don't have to come onto the uh, tippy toes but if you can try it out it's it's great for your circulation second heart balance developing new neural pathways and muscles <laughs> see <laughs> and when you <laughs> lose it jump around four and five good job opposite side straight back spread your toes open so that you have a good foundation two engaging the inner thigh three four and five good job as much as you did it's great you're here you're still doing it if you get frustrated breathe it out those are very specific new movements you're not gonna find them in a lot of <laughs> fitness or yoga programs i'm challenging you in interesting new ways but your body will really appreciate it all right let's lay down lower down onto your onto your back and and step onto your right foot foot pointing directly forward and we're going to do a one legged level the hips bridge two three four five six seven eight nine and ten change one two three four five six seven eight nine ten lift your legs up and we're going to uh, to reach forward pull the belly in bend the right knee toe dip keep the low back down opposite side change really hold it all in <laughs> and a few more great last ones and let's bring the soles of the feet together press the knees away from you and pay attention to your exhalations slow exhalations and from here we're going to bring the right ankle over the left knee press with your right elbow the right knee away from you the left leg in towards you hold it here and stretching the hip stretching the hamstring great open the arms out and here you're going to <laughs> to drop your legs on one side and you're going to look away from your legs so you basically are trying to get your um, right foot on the floor and come up with the strength of your core change 
stretch, push, lengthen, breathe. And drop them with control. You can press the knee away from you here. And with control, coming back up. And let's draw a few circles with the knees in the chest. Press your hands out to the side, straighten the legs. And we're going to lift here just slightly off the floor so basically press your shoulders down and lift the heels up engaging the lower belly lift great Step the left foot down, right foot, right ankle above the knee. One more twist here, except for this one is, um, it's elongating the obliques. Look away, so you're drawing the legs down. Pressing the right knee away from you, look away from from your legs. Coming up, opposite side. Take the left ankle over the right knee. Drop them to your right. Look away from your legs. Pressing the knee gently away from you to open the hips. come up and you can lay down in Shavasana allowing yourself to flow with the quality of water beautiful water so filling the waters within you your resonance with beautiful water too allowing yourself to merge be a part of or experience yourself flowing on top of water And just stay here for a few moments. Allowing yourself to flow with love, strength and ease. Namaste. <laughs>